Good evening, everybody, and welcome to episode three of Colonial Witch Trial Misconceptions. And this episode is going to deal with <clears throat> the fact that the Puritans were not ignorant. So this misconception video or episode will be divided into three parts. The first part will speak briefly on the overall education of the children in the 1600s. The second part will be published next week and will speak briefly on the education of at least one of the nine judges in 1692. The third part will be speak briefly on the education of Anne Dudley Bradstreet and will be published in two weeks. And I'm so glad to be back here tonight because as you can see, there was so much information that I found out that it was hard to streamline into one published video. And, <clears throat> excuse me, the other fact is that I have been sick all week and I'm um, just getting over a virus. So you may have to excuse me if I drink a little bit of water as I um, continue to record this video. So here is the reason why the Puritans, generally speaking, were not uneducated. The Puritans had to provide basic education to their children by law for two reasons. Number one, all children had to learn to read the Bible. Number two, all children had to know and understand the capital laws of the county. This law was enforced by the town selectmen. Any family found not to be in compliance was fined 20 shillings per offense. So that is about 85 to 90 dollars in today's US currency. The basic tool to teach reading was a horn book. And this was made of a paddle shaped board with squared corners covered with paper on one side. And for preservation, the paper was laminated with transparent horn from an animal. The alphabet was at the top of the page, followed by the Lord's Prayer. Other ways children were taught was when Mama traced letters with her finger in the ashes by the hearth and sounded the letters with her children repeating those sounds many times over. She might also place a Bible in their hands and point to the words as she read familiar Bible passages, familiarizing her children to the words. It is known through primary sources that Sarah did her motherly duty well with the education of her son Ephraim. Ephraim testified to the following at his mother's trial, and I quote, she hath instructed me well in the Christian religion and the ways of God ever since I was able to take instruction. Fathers were in charge of a different aspect of their son's education. They taught their sons a trade or sometimes sent their sons to be apprenticed by a neighbor to learn a trade. Ephraim Wilde basically was an apprentice to his father, John, for seven years, beginning at the age of 18. About five years into his, his apprenticeship, Ephraim was just about to start his family. And possibly, or most likely, this apprenticeship was for carpentry, as that was John's actual trade. Ephraim would have been taught through observation, then doing, and practicing this trade with precision. Because John kept Ephraim from earning his own income during those years, and because his, he loved his only surviving son, John handed over the farm to Ephraim in 1690, right around the time of the birth of Ephraim's first child. After being able to view Ephraim's notebook or account book on deposit at the Phillips Library reading room, it is clear that he was very well educated. This notebook not only was a record of accounts showing his ability to keep track of the finances of the farm, but also a book showing his interest in astronomy. He wrote everything he knew about the planets, plus some, and he wrote with a very clear hand. 
Unfortunately, I don't have the rights to actually publish any of those pages um, publicly at this time. But should I get those rights um, in the near future, you can bet that you will see me publish at least one or two of those pages so you can see for yourself um, how educated Ephraim actually was. There were also other ways communities made sure this law was followed. Salem Village tried to accommodate families by developing a movable schoolhouse. Daniel Andrew, a relatively educated farmer, would teach at certain homes in the village for about one month at a time, hopefully covering the necessary education for all of the village children. So now that we know that at the very least the Puritans had a basic education, stay tuned again for next week's episode where I will introduce the quote-unquote higher education of at least one judge in 1692. Thank you all and have a great night.